Miranda Hughes had never been on a plane before, so she didn't know how to behave at the airport. The poor woman felt so out of place that she didn't immediately understand where she needed to go and what she needed to do. But then Mrs. Hughes pulled herself together and looked around. She saw a group of passengers who seemed to know exactly what they were doing, so she decided to follow them. Having lived her life in a small town in Iowa, she simply didn't know how to check in and board a flight. By and large, given the woman's venerable age, it wasn't all that surprising. After all, not every person would dare go on such a long journey at the age of 87 years. Moreover, the world was changing so fast that Mrs. Hughes simply didn't know some of the innovations. Since traveling by plane seemed very important and special, the woman decided to put on her best clothes. Unfortunately, other passengers still tried to avoid Mrs. Hughes and looked suspiciously at the confused old woman. They probably mistook her for some homeless person who accidentally wandered into the airport. Imagine the surprise of the check-in officers when they saw that Miranda Hughes was flying business class. The most interesting part, however, came later when the old woman almost got on the wrong flight, which was going to a completely different part of the country. Fortunately, the airport staff was diligent and sent the old woman to the right gate. All this time, Miranda Hughes was terribly nervous and kept looking at her watch. Smiling condescendingly, one of the other passengers asked, Is this your first time flying, ma'am? From the way he was dressed, Mrs. Hughes deducted that he was also flying business class. You're right, it's my first time, which is why I'm so nervous, the old woman admitted honestly. The other passengers looked with interest at the woman who seemed to have traveled from the past in order to get the most amazing experience in her life. Feeling uncomfortable, Miranda Hughes shifted from foot to foot, looking forward to the boarding the flight. Soon, a friendly flight attendant came out to the passengers and invited everyone to board the plane. Mrs. Hughes deliberately let all the passengers board before her. Wow, you have a business class ticket. The flight attendant exclaimed in surprise, immediately pointing the old woman to her seat. When Mrs. Hughes boarded the plane and saw her seat, she felt uneasy. She had to sit next to an overweight man who looked at her with undisguised disapproval. Why do I have to sit next to this old woman? Couldn't you seat her somewhere else? The man exclaimed indignantly. Mrs. Hughes felt even more uncomfortable, as if she did something wrong. Mr. Edwards, sir, Mrs. Hughes has the same kind of ticket as you do. Moreover, she paid just as much money as you did, the flight attendant noted. But there was no stopping the quarrelsome passenger who was already on a roll. I don't care what kind of ticket she has, I, I didn't pay so much money to sit next to some homeless woman. If I knew this would happen, I would have bought an economy class ticket, the men exclaimed. Still unsure whether she should take her seat or not, Mrs. Hughes watched anxiously as the flight attendant tried to calm her seatmate. The disgruntled passenger attracted the attention of all the other passengers on the plane, who couldn't help but get divided into two groups, one feeling sorry for Miranda Hughes and the other one for Mr. Edwards. Finally, the flight attendant managed to get the man to quiet down, making sure he understood that he couldn't do anything about the assigned seats. Mr. Edwards, be a gentleman and don't force a woman twice your age to stand in the aisle, the flight attendant added, which definitely tipped the scales in her favor. The man pursed his lips resentfully and turned to face the window. Meanwhile, Mrs. Hughes sat down in her seat, still holding on to her purse. Unfortunately, the disgruntled man had started a chain reaction, and now some other passengers started discussing the seating arrangement and insisted that the old woman belonged in the economy class. Feeling guilty about everything that was happening, Mrs. Hughes was almost ready to move to the economy class. Frankly speaking, the old woman didn't expect her first time on a plane to go this way, which was evident from the tears frozen in her eyes. Stop it. Don't start a fight because of me. I'll go sit to the economy class. But her seatmate had finally calmed down by that time. He picked up a magazine and started reading it, ignoring the old woman's presence. Taking advantage of the quiet, the flight attendant patted the old woman on the shoulder and added quietly, It's okay, Mrs. Hughes. Try to relax and forget what just happened. After the stress she experienced, the old woman didn't know what to think anymore. At that moment, she tried to get comfortable in her seat and accidentally dropped her purse to the floor. Trying to make amends, her seatmate bent down and immediately picked it up, 
but he did it so awkwardly that an old photograph fell out of the side pocket of the purse. Wow, that's a really old picture. Who is that? The man exclaimed, having picked up the photograph. It pictured a boy of about five years who was holding the handlebars of a tricycle. Mrs. Hughes smiled and carefully took the photograph from Mr. Edward's hand. This is my son. He grew up a long time ago and became a pilot. By the way, he's the one flying this plane. The old woman added with an undisguised pride in her voice. The passengers looked at her, after which the most curious of them asked Mrs. Hughes to tell them more about her life. Miranda Hughes began her story from afar, involuntarily taking the audience back to the times when her parents had a small farm in the south of the country. The alligators, the hot climate, and the many swamps posed a great danger to those unfamiliar with the peculiarities of life in that region. Miranda grew up in a poor family, which had five other children besides her. It just so happened that Miranda was the oldest among them. Naturally, she ended up taking care of her younger siblings. Miranda's parents worked in the field from morning to night until her father enlisted to go to Normandy to open the second front, which was very hard on the family. Unfortunately, without the man of the house, it quickly started falling apart. On top of that, the youngest child, Charles, had a mental disability, which made him incapable of taking care of himself. Unfortunately, Simon Hughes only fought for about half a year, after which a coffin covered with the national flag arrived in a small town in southern Florida. Before leaving for war, he gave his daughter a gold medallion with the image of the Virgin Mary, which he inherited from his late grandmother. Hold on to it until I get back. Simon Hughes said to his daughter. The man couldn't have known at the time that the countdown on his life had already started. Later, Miranda would keep the medallion together with her father's military awards, which he got for saving a fellow soldier on the battlefield at the cost of his own life. The loss of the breadwinner was a heavy blow to the family that was barely making ends meet as it was. After the death of her husband, Penelope Hughes seemed to have been replaced she was never an outgoing woman, but when she became a widow, she virtually closed off from the entire world. Time flew by, making its own adjustments to the life of the family farmers. Miranda grew up and was working in the field more than anyone else. At the same time, she took care of her younger siblings, among whom Chris stood out in particular. Miranda needed to think about starting her own family, but instead she took on the burden of maintaining the farm that yielded less and less profit with each passing year. That was partly due to the severe droughts, which put the Hughes family below the poverty line. Three of Penelope's other children moved to another state, determined to stay away from their crazy mother and sick brother. It was at that time that Miranda met her true love. She was 27 years old at the time and no longer believed that she would ever get to start her own family. George was a fisherman who lived in a small hut by the river. Despite the fact that the catch was getting smaller every year, the young man managed to earn good money. The relationship between George and Miranda developed so quickly that everyone around them knew that they would get married soon. And they probably would have if it weren't for one event that completely changed Miranda's life. It all started with the fact that one evening, her mentally challenged brother, Chris, took his late father's boat to the river. A strong wind was blowing on that fateful day, threatening to turn into a real storm at any moment. The boat of the frightened teenager ended up in the middle of the river, where it could hardly keep afloat under the onslaught of the huge waves. Having noticed Miranda's challenged brother in the middle of the river, George rushed to help him. The elements were raging, striving to devour the brave fisherman. At that moment, the skies burst with a heavy downpour, which was coupled with the wind of incredible force that raised huge waves. Unfortunately, despite being a skilled swimmer, George's best efforts were futile. He drowned together with Chris, not having reached him only a couple of feet. The news of the death of her fiancé and younger brother devastated Miranda. The young woman looked at the sky with undisguised resentment, blaming the heavens for taking away the most important people in her life. That was when Miranda found out that she was pregnant. Of course, this was little consolation given her inevitable situation. 
Moreover, Miranda suffered from terrible morning sickness and dizziness during the entire pregnancy, which made her feel completely exhausted all the time. Unfortunately, her mother was already showing signs of dementia, which manifested in her aggressive perception of reality and endless arguments with her daughter. Having given birth to a beautiful son, Miranda was afraid to leave him alone with her mother, who seemed to have completely lost touch with reality by that time and acted like a small child herself. Miranda lived the next two years in a state of eternal stress, after which she made the hardest decision in her life and took little David to an orphanage. The young mother convinced herself that she would certainly get her son back in a year or two, but the reality turned out to be quite different. Having lived the next five years with her mother, whose dementia was actively progressing, Miranda finally decided to get her son back. But when she went to the orphanage, it turned out that David had already been adopted by another family, traces of which were lost in the state of Iowa. A lot of time had passed since then. Penelope Hughes died, and Miranda herself spent a lot of time and effort trying to find her only son. Unfortunately, she never managed to do it until now. Thus, Miranda Hughes was flying in a plane piloted by her son, David. Mrs. Hughes' story made most of the passengers tear up and feel bad for the treatment she got on the plane. Even her overweight seatmate was embarrassed and sniffling softly, afraid to disturb the old woman with an awkward movement. All the passengers sat in silence for the rest of the flight, looking with undisguised respect at the elderly woman who had been through so many trials. When the plane finally landed, Mrs. Hughes hugged her only son for the first time in years. Here, your grandfather would have wanted you to have this. He died in Normandy, fighting for our freedom. Miranda Hughes whispered, crying with joy, as she handed her son her late father's medallion. Taking the family heirloom in his hands, the pilot couldn't hold back his tears, and to the loud applause of the passengers, hung the medallion around his neck.